Hey everybody, welcome back to another tutorial on Microsoft Orleans. In this video, we're going to look a little bit more in depth at grain communication. So we're going to look at how one grain can send messages and make method calls on another grain. So we're going to add a new grain to our system. Previously, we had a checking account grain. In this tutorial, we're going to add an ATM grain and we're going to start communicating between our checking accounts and our ATMs. We're going to talk a little bit about deadlocks and different things to be aware of when communicating and calling methods on grains. If you like this video or you're enjoying this series, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to be alerted for new videos. And don't forget to like the video as well. It helps a lot. Let's get into it. In Orleans, or any actor system, the ability of grains or actors to communicate and pass data to each other is very important for the functioning of our system. Every time a grain calls a method on another grain, or whenever an Orleans client calls a method on a grain, all we are essentially doing is pushing a message to the grain we are trying to call the method on. Every action a grain takes is essentially it processing a message, and as we stated before, a grain can only process a single message at a time. This is the core tenant of the actor framework and actor model, and helps reduce complexity in our system. For example, say we have an ATM grain here. And again, we're representing the ATM grain as a dot with a message queue in front of it. And we also have an account grain. If say we receive a client call to the ATM grain to call a method like debit, like we saw in the previous video, that will push that message onto our grain queue. And if the grain is currently doing nothing, it will be able to process that message. So the, if in the course of processing that message, the ATM grain then wants to communicate with the account grain, say to check the balance of the account that's trying to withdraw money. That then pulses a message onto the account grain, which then begins to process. Once that's finished processing, the account grain will return to the ATM grain, and then the ATM grain will be able to finish processing the blue message and return to the client that called it. So everything here is about pushing messages. Other mechanisms like recurring grain reminders and streaming that we will see in the future also use messages to send and receive data. So every grain call, every stream message, every reminder will all be pushed onto this message queue. And if a grain is doing too much, receiving too many method calls, too many streaming methods, too many reminders, then that might start to backlog. So just keep that in mind when you are designing your grains how they will communicate with each other, how they will receive streaming messages, receive reminders, different things like that is very important. And one of the main reasons why this is important, and one really important thing to mention when talking about grain communication is deadlocks. Deadlocks occur when one grain calls another grain that then calls back to the original grain. The original grain cannot return until it receives a response from the grain it called but the grain it called can't response until the original grain responds. We're essentially stuck in sort of a circular wait scenario. And what ultimately will happen is that the call to the method will time out and fail. That's kind of complicated. So let's look at it with a quick example. Again, we have our two grains, the ATM grain and the account grain. And again, the blue message comes in for the ATM grain to process. That will then call to the account grain, the same as we saw before which will push a message onto the account grain for it to process. So currently the ATM grain is processing the blue message and the account grain is processing the yellow message. But as part of the account grains implementation, it then needs to call back to that ATM for whatever reason. That purple message then goes onto the ATM's pending queue. So essentially what's happening, the ATM is currently processing blue message and won't start to process the purple message until it finishes processing the blue message. But it cannot finish processing the blue message until the account grain responds and it finishes processing its yellow message. But it can't finish processing its yellow message until the purple message responds and we're in this circular lock situation. So essentially the account grain will not get a response from the ATM because it can't. And then the ATM grain can't get a response from the account grain. So everything will just time out and essentially we'll return to the client with an exception or an error and we will fail processing that original client call to the ATM grain. And this will essentially always fail 
because we've introduced this circular dependency. Sometimes deadlines can be a little bit more subtle. They won't be as easy to spot. They might happen only in certain circumstances or when certain things happen in certain orders or when things happen at the same time in certain situations. Some kind of common strategies to avoid these deadlocks is just trying to reduce the number of grain to grain calls. So a really well-designed system with really well-designed actors can really help to reduce the number of grain calls we have and, and thus the potential for deadlocks. And finally, using streaming can also help us reduce the potential for deadlocks. Okay, so if we jump back to Visual Studio and we want to start looking at grain-to-grain -grain communication. We've essentially already seen grain and client communication. So we've done that in our methods in our API program class here. So when we use the cluster client, what we're essentially doing is calling a grain from a client, so not from another grain. And as we saw, that is essentially putting that message onto that queue and the grain is still processing it. The receiving grain router is still processing it in the same way as it would for a grain to grain call. But well, let's actually add a second grain here. So we want to add that ATM grain that we discussed in our previous video. So if we go to abstractions and let's add first our IATM grain. And this will, as we saw before, define the methods that are available on that ATM grain. So public interface. And as usual, we need to also implement the um, I grain with GUID key. So we're going to use a GUID key as well for this grain, but we could also use the integer or the string key. And then the method that we're going to have on it is simply just a withdraw method. So it's just going to return a task, so it's not going to return anything. When we call withdraw, it's going to take two parameters. It's going to take a good for the checking account ID of what we want to withdraw money from and a decimal for the amount of money we want to withdraw. So we can just delete the usings. And that's our ATM grain. So our ATM grain is also going to have some state. So we'll just add a new state class as well. And we'll simply just call this ATM state for now. And again, as usually, we'll just make this a public record. It needs to be serializable. So we'll just add generate serializer. And we'll just add a couple of properties. We'll add the ID, even though we can get it from the grain anyway. I'm just going to store it in state two. And let's add the ATM balance. So we're going to have a balance on the ATM and we need to make them serializable with the ID attribute. So one, two, or zero and one router. Let's get rid of that. So that's our ATM state. We probably also want to have an initialize method on the ATM just to start its starting balance. And we will just pass the opening balance to the initialize method. OK, cool. So now that we've got our state defined and we've got our ITM, ATM grain interface defined, let's add the grain itself. So new item, and we'll just call it ATM grain. Easy peasy. That also needs to inherit from grain from Orleans and also needs to implement our IATM grain interface. We will also make it public. So let's implement this interface. We do, of course, want to inject our state like we did before. So we need to use the persistent state attribute. We need to give the state name, which we'll just call ATM. Uh, we need to use the storage name. We can reuse this storage we've already added, so we'll call it table storage, the same as the checking account grain. So we'll just move that from here to here. So it's a new state, but using the same storage provider. And I persistent state, and the type is obviously ATM state. And we'll just call that variable ATM state. Nothing different from what we did before. And we'll just save that in a private read only field a persistent state ATM state so we can access it in our methods. And of course we want to assign it in the constructor again the same way you would do with any dependency injection that we're injecting into a grain. Okay so when we want to initialize it it should be super straightforward. We're just going to say ITM state state 
dot balance equals opening balance. And we'll initialize the ID here as well. ATM state state ID equals this dot get grain ID. Great, good key, perfect. And we'll make that method async also. That's our initialized method implemented. Let's get rid of a couple of these unused usings and we will now implement the withdraw method. So this is the method where we're actually gonna call from the ATM grain to the checking account grain. So what's essentially gonna happen is the grain client, so our API is gonna be called, that's gonna have an Orleans client. It's gonna call the withdraw method on the ATM grain. That withdraw method is gonna withdraw from the ATM by making a grain to grain call to the checking account that we pass and debiting that, and then also debiting the ATM cash balance. So let's go ahead and implement that. We'll start by just making this method async. And the first thing we want to do is we want to make that call to the checking account grain. So we do that with a grain factory. So because we're inside a grain, we can use this grain factory and we want to use the get grain method. And this works very similar to how the client in the API works. So we just give it the interface of the grain in question. So the checking account grain and we need to pass the ID of the grain. So that's just the checking account ID that we passed in the method here. So that gives us a reference to that checking account grain. And again, this is not async, so this is just kind of like a reference to it. We haven't actually called anything. We haven't made any network request. So we're gonna do that next. So on the checking account grain, we're gonna call that debit method. And we're gonna pass the amount we wanna debit the account by. I remember we didn't add really any exception handling yet in here, or we didn't add anything to make sure the balance is sufficient. Obviously in a real system, you would want to do that. But for now, we're just going to await that call and assume it has succeeded. So that's it really for grain to grain communication. That's all you have to do in code. Obviously watching out for deadlocks like we discussed is important as well. But for a really simple system like this, that's essentially it. We also want to just reduce the balance on the ATM state too. So we can do that super simple. So we can do state balance equals, well, let's just make it very explicit. Current ATM balance equals ATM state balance. Updated balance is gonna be the current balance minus the amount to withdraw. And then we're just gonna update the state to that updated balance. And then as usual, we want to write that state or save it. So we want to do await ATM state, write the state async. That's essentially it for the withdraw method. We've done the initialized method, the ATM grain, uh, the state and the interface are all there. We haven't actually added anything new here. There's no packages to install. Uh, grain communication is in the core packages we've already installed. We haven't added any new storage configuration. We're using something that's already configured. So that should be all set up. We shouldn't have to make any changes in our silo at all to support this. Our silo should just pick up this new grain because the silo has a reference to this project here, which has the reference to both the ATM grain and the checking current grain. So when we restart our silo, um, or when we deploy to our cluster in production, it should just pick up that it now needs to start posting this ATM grain as well as the checking account grain. So now we actually want to call this withdraw method in our client, so in our API. So let's first add a contract for that and we'll just call it ATM withdrawal. Super simple, let's make it serializable by adding data contract and it will be a record. And we want to pass a couple of things here. So we're just passing true API we want to pass the checking account ID that we want to withdraw from. Obviously in reality, a lot of this would require a lot of authentication and security, but for now we will not have to do any of that. That's probably not something that's directly related to Orleans. It's more of an ASP.NET thing. So if you're interested in that, uh, I'd recommend checking out a tutorial on ASP.NET for kind of API security and authentication. Um, and we also want to pass the amount. So public decimal amount. So that's the amount to withdraw. And that is our API contract, simple. 
So let's add a new method. So again, it's going to be a post. So we're going to map post. And this will just be the same as a lot of our other post methods. So actually, let's copy that from checking account. But we're actually calling ATM. So to be rest, we want to call the ATM resource. Um, and we want to have an ATM ID rather than a checking account ID. And the method we would want to call is withdrawal. Perfect. And ATM ID, ATM withdrawal is the name of the contract for the post request body that we want to pass. So we're getting the ATM ID from the root. We're getting the ATM withdrawal from the body. And we also want to continue to inject the cluster client. But we no longer want to get a checking account grain from the cluster client. What we want to do is we want to get the ATM grain. We want to pass the ATM ID to that. So that will get us the ATM grain. We don't actually need to get the checking account grain at all here in the cluster client because the ATM grain is making that grain to grain call for us. So that happens completely abstracted away from the client. We're just telling the ATM we want to withdraw and we're letting the ATM take care of the details for us. So perfect on the ATM grain, we're just going to call the withdraw method. And remember, we need to pass two things. We need to pass the checking account ID, which is from the ATM withdrawal contract. And we need to pass the withdrawal amount, which again is from the same contract. And I think we're fine to also return no content here. So we also need the ATM to initialize it as well. So for the initialize, we will use ATM slash ATM ID again, trying to be as restful as we can. We don't have an initialization contract, which we probably will need. So let's go to our contracts. Let's add the contract for create ATM. Super simple. Again, just follow the same formula, make it serializable and add the one variable we need for the initial balance. Decimal initial ATM cash balance. And make it an in only easy peasy. And that's what we will use when we're creating it. So create ATM contract on the API. Perfect. Nothing much needs to change here. We still want to just get the ATM grain. And we want to use the initialize method. And we just want to pass the amount. So that's it. We've added our two API methods. We could also add a third method if we wanted to just check the balance, the cash balance in the ATM. We're not going to do that for now. It should be pretty much the exact same as the balance check for our checking account. We would have to add it on the interface for the IATM grain as well. And we would also have to implement it in the ATM grain. But we're not going to do that. If you want to do that yourself, just follow the exact same code that we use for checking account, but just add some um, changes to make it work with the ATM grain. Again, note that we actually didn't have to do anything in uh, the setup for our clients. Again, we're just proxying to the silo that already knows about this grain. There's nothing specific that we need to do to set up the silo or the client for this new grain, as long as we're using the storage accounts and storage provider on the silo that already exists. So let's go ahead and run our client and our silo. We'll call the ATM on our client that will make a call to our silo for the ATM grain, which in turn will then make a call to the checking account grain to actually withdraw that money at the ATM. Okay, so let's start our cluster and make these ATM withdrawal calls and see that everything works as we would expect. So just going to open up Postman and I've already added the initialize and withdraw from ATM endpoints here. So we just want to initialize an ATM. And actually, one thing we need to do before we do that is we need to change the initialize ATM to return the ID of the ATM or we won't know what it is. So we need to that to be created and we don't want to pass during initialize the ATM ID, we actually want to create it here. The same way we did on the checking account ID. So we're going to return created and we're going to return ATM slash 
and get rid of this. Perfect. So we'll just restart our cluster again. And once that's started, we can go back to Postman and let's make this call to initialize our ATM. Sending request, it was created. We get the ATM ID from the headers. Perfect. And let's make a withdrawal from this ATM with this ID. The withdraw method, ATM again, apologies for the small text here. And we want to withdraw, we want to choose from a checking account. So let's use the checking account we created in the previous video. Let's just get the balance from that. So note here, it's $1,090. We'll get the checking account ID and we'll copy that into the body of the withdrawal. So let's withdraw 90 euro. So we should drop the checking account balance to 1000 because the ATM grain is making a call to the checking account grain. So let's send that. We got two or four no contents. So it didn't look like there was any exceptions thrown. And let's just double check our balance here. It is still 190. So let's see what might have gone wrong. And yeah, sorry. So here's the problem is we just have the wrong name in the body in Postman. So rather than withdrawal amount, it should just be amount. And let's send that. And we hit the breakpoint I set while I was debugging. Let's just step over that. And if we get checking balance now, hopefully it's down to 1000. And let's just withdraw 800 this time so it drops hopefully to 900 made that request 204 and check the balance and it's 900 euro as we expect so thanks for checking out this video on grain communication really where we went through a quick overview at the start and we just saw how we could communicate between our checking account grain and our atm grain again this will set us up nicely for future videos like we said where obviously we might want to do the withdrawal and the debit in a transaction. So that's what we're going to build towards in a future video. But in the next video, we're going to have a quick look at reminders and timers in Orleans. So these are the kind of things that we can use for recurring jobs. So if you want to check out that video and you want to keep up to date on the latest videos on Microsoft Orleans and other distributed application development topics, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like the video and hit that notification bell to make sure you don't miss any tutorials. Thanks. Nice.